it's the mid 70s and I'm in my mid teens and uh, hanging out at Venice Beach in the Los Angeles area. That's where I grew up and I grew up hanging out there mostly just you know lying out but a uh, little volleyball, a little fishing, a uh, little bit of surfing and you've heard of longboarding? I'm a wide boarder. <laughs> yep. uh, so here I am. I, I'm, I'm down here at uh, Venice Beach and I one day and I'm just lying out and I notice a, a couple of roller skaters come skating by and now this is not unusual today. I mean today it's a, a common a outdoor activity to be outdoors skating at the beach or elsewhere but uh, in that time you know roller skating that was something you did. You, you rented skates at a, a roller rink and you went around in circles. So this was kind of unusual but you know, a, a couple of weeks later I saw a couple more skaters go by and then another one and, and I, I had an idea. I thought, you know, what if I bought a bunch of pairs of roller skates and I rented them to people? I was a, a budding entrepreneur. I was entrepreneating. <laughs> Is that a word, Grant? Because uh, if it's not yet, it's my gift to you here today. Okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking about this and, okay, what's it going to cost me to get each pair of roller skates and well, I have to print some flyers, pass those out and oh, I need a sign, you know, I probably charge what, $4 an hour and I need one of those sandwich board signs, put that out, rental skates, $4 an hour and then it got kind of hot so I walked down to the water and I dove under a wave and I forgot about roller skates. <laughs> the next summer, I was back there just lying out and I saw a, a, a van, it pulled up next to the Venice boardwalk there and, and it parked and on the side of this van it said Sparky's Skate Rentals. Skipper, Skippy, it was a long time ago, I'm going with Sparky. So Sparky gets out of his van and, and he walks over and he opens up the doors to the van and inside there's dozens of pairs of roller skates in there and Sparky puts out a, a sandwich board sign and it says Rental skates, $5 an hour. And within a couple of weeks, there were three more vans out there along the Venice boardwalk renting roller skates. And the bike shops and the board shops started renting them out. And a storefront roller skate rental store popped up. And this, this mini industry was popping up right before my eyes. And I had that idea first, Sparky. I thought of that before it was even fashionable. Does that make me a hipster? <laughs> so I was a hipster before there were even hipsters, I guess. So I guess I got that going for me. Whatever. So it's now the mid-90s, and I'm, I'm living in Seattle, and I'm having lunch talking with a, a friend of mine, Jeff Pixler, and we're talking about Microsoft headquartered there in Seattle and, and Bill Gates and you know C Microsoft's just getting huge and everywhere we look around Seattle you know a new campus is going up yeah and we're, we're talking about this and you're always running into people that you know work for Microsoft and oh well yeah and Gates I mean he's like this world famous person oh yeah well, like him or not he's a cultural icon here in Seattle yeah yeah you know he's like a titan of commerce he's 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 like a superhero and uh yeah, 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 superhero, right. And, you know, every superhero, you know what they need? Superheroes need action figures. We had an idea. What if Microsoft might want to buy thousands and thousands of Bill Gates action figures and give them out to their employees? You know, they, they might like them or they might might be ironic humor or whatever, but it, it, why stop there? Apple, Steve Jobs, action figure. Yeah, and I'm, I'm picturing this kid down in uh, Silicon Valley. He's got one of each. You know, he's got a Steve Jobs and he's got Bill <laughs> Gates and he's playing with a <laughs> And then he grows up and he goes to Comic-Con. <laughs> so, CEO action figures, we'd have a whole line of them. And, well, why stop there? How about uh, uh, rock stars and, and movie stars and, and, and politicians? People would buy politician action figures just so they could snap their little heads off. Okay. So 
we're thinking, okay, we've got this whole idea. We can make custom action figures, make them look like anybody. And then the clock ticked up to one o'clock and we went back to our cubicles and we forgot about action figures. Guess what you can buy online today? A couple clicks, upload your photo, $99. And you too can have an action figure that looks just like you. I had that idea first, Sparky. <laughs> About this time, I, I was doing a little research around change and, and organizations and changing people and how it is that we, we come to change and sometimes we don't. And I came across some work done by David Gleischer. Uh, he had came up with a change that explains about formula and he called it Gleischer's formula for change. And this formula sort of enlightened me a lot. What, what Gleischer said was, first of all, on one side of the equation here, there's always resistance to change. It's natural human tendency, it's sort of the law of the universe. And what he said was that in order for there to be change, there has to be three things that all happen at the same time. First of all, you have to be dissatisfied with the status quo. Second of all, you have to have a vision, a clear picture, a clear idea of what could be different. And third of all, you have to take the first steps. Those are the hardest first steps when you have a new idea or a concept, but those are the most important because it gets the momentum going. And what Gleischer said was, you gotta put all these things together all at the same time and they have to be greater than, yeah, greater than the resistance to change. Otherwise, things won't change. And I was thinking about this in light of organizations and people and, and started to kind of think about myself and. I realized something, you know, yeah, I can be dissatisfied and I challenge the status quo and I like ideas and that whole part of the creative process and vision. And, and yet I had this tendency sometimes not to take that first step, but to think of that idea and get, it, get crazy about it. Oh, well, I don't have time for it now, so I'll put it on the back shelf of my brain here and I'll think about it later and then forget about it. Now, we're here today because Ted has a mantra Ideas worth spreading. And that inspires us, it brought us here. It's a noble cause. It's why we're talking about these ideas here today. I'm gonna to suggest to you that ideas that are worth spreading are also worth something even more. I have three sons. Their names are Kendon, Brandon, and Ryan. Kendon's the oldest. And when he was about three or four years old, uh, we were just sitting on the couch uh, one day, and uh, all of a sudden he, he got up and he said, I got an idea. And he skipped off down the hall and he, and he went and he did something. And you know, I didn't think too much of about it, but I started noticing he did this a lot. He'd say, I got an idea. And he'd skip off down the hall and he'd go do something. And I started to realize that you know, when he talks about I got an idea, he wasn't talking about just his mental state of mind. He was saying, I got an idea. I'm gonna go do something. And we lose that. I've lost that. Many of you at times have lost that. That, that idea that I got an idea, so yeah, I'm gonna go act on my idea. We hear the voices that say, no, that's not good enough, or eh, you can't really do that, or Wait till later when you really have time and then we put it on the back shelf and we forget about it. But here's the thing, if your great idea is worth spreading, your great idea is worth doing. And there's something magical that happens when you take that first step and start doing. Your ideas get done. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh, you know, I could start on that, but you know, I, I gotta have a plan and everything's gotta be perfect before I start. Or maybe you're thinking, I'm really, you know, I'm more of a, an idea person, I, I'm not an implementer. Uh, well, I'm a creative, and that part of my brain doesn't work that way, so, you know, uh, come on, creators and creatives create. Innovators don't just think and talk about ideas, they innovate. And perfectionists just get over themselves and they take the first step. Beta, 1.0, 2.0, 2.1. Because here's what happens. 
when this life is done, when you are done, you're not going to think to yourself, I had an idea. You're going to want to be able to say, I made that. And you're going to want to hear the words, well done. So I got a challenge for you. You came here today with some ideas that you haven't done anything about. And you heard some ideas and maybe you're thinking right now, yeah, I got an idea. Your challenge, take the first step. Tonight. If your idea matters, why wouldn't you take the first step tonight? What do you have going on that's more important tonight? Okay, Jimmy Fallon, but he's not even on on Sunday nights, right? So <laughs> take that first step and take it tonight. Now, I don't know if this is really you know, revolutionary thought leadership here, and I don't know if it's game-changing, or is it? Or is it? Because if you take that step, and you, 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 and me, and you. We might change the world. I got an idea. I got to go.